So I'm Gregoire. I will speak about eTest, which is a software for formative evaluation using multiple choice questions on internet. So um, here's the context. Uh, it started in January 2008. I was teaching assistants in biostatistics at the University of Namur here in Belgium, in the French part. And as a PhD student, uh, I try to study didactic of statistics, so the way we have to teach the statistics to students. And one of our goal was to detect the difficult task, the tasks which are difficult for the students, and we used multiple choice questions for that. So we uh, had some requirements for this project. We wanted to put the questions online. Uh, we want a version control system uh, to track the modifications by the different teachers on, on the questions. We want to share the questions between courses, and uh, the copy-paste is not an option for sharing. Uh, we want to control the access to the questions. Sometimes we want to put some, them for, uh, free on the internet, and sometimes we want to check the access from the user based on login password or, or IPs. And uh, a strange uh, stuff we didn't see any, uh, elsewhere, it's we want sometimes to have more than one user authenticated on a single browser. Why? Because I don't know in your country, but in my university, I have some labs, for example, there are 10 computers, I have 25 students. So I must allow the 25 students to use the 10 computers. So there must be two or three in front of the screen and have to record the, uh, their answer on their own sessions at the same time. Uh, we also wanted to provide sometimes a question on screen and sometimes on paper. Some paper, the, question, the students receive the paper with the question printed on it and then just have to uh, record the, the answers. Uh, and like it's for formative evaluation, we want to instant feedback to students and global answer analysis for teacher. So I will not uh, detail all the options, but I will focus my presentation on main concepts. The first one is when we um, check all the learning managing systems that we founded to eventually use them to this project. Um, we had a problem because in the main learning managing systems, the main entity is the courses for, for a teacher. And generally, a course is a closed space. You have a, a folder to put some documents, some links, you have some tools to build some exercise and stuff like this. But it's quite um, difficult uh, and sometimes impossible to share your contents you built in one course to another course. And we have some teachers which have several courses, for example, five or six or four for the same teacher, and he has to duplicate all these contents in the different course spaces. So it's not very um, useful, and there were not uh, content version control neither. So for the, this project, we work in a different way. We create another entity. The entity was called the subject. For example, uh, computing science or st statistics science. And all the content made by teachers is not anymore in the course space. It's uh, in, in the subject space. So all the course are linked to a subject. All teachers are collaborators in the same space. And each content that each uh, teacher is created can uh, directly be shared uh, with the other teacher of the other course, which are quite linked to the subject, and um, one subject can be one course can be linked to several subjects. For example, the first one here, SBOB 324, is in fact a course of bioinformatics. So it's use some computing and statistics and sometimes biology. So it can link the teacher can link his course to several subjects to. Uh, be able to use the content that other teachers are sharing with him. And another stuff which is quite useful, it's in the side the, the platform. You can um, create several institutions which are hosting several courses. Here in a, an example, at the University of Namur, we work with the high school of Louvain Eno. And the courses of this high school can be linked to the subject inside the same platform. The user can be synchronized by LDAP server, etc. So in the home page, it looks like this. This is the home page of the platform. You can see the list of the courses of two subjects here. Um, it's, it's in French because it's a French speaking in university, but it's not very uh, important for this presentation. So you can see biology, uh, animal biology as the first subject in front of the red dot and the biostatistics as the second row. And you can see that the courses here are from the high school and all these ones the, are from the University of Namur and all these contents are shared. 
The second main concept is the distinction between question surveys and instance of surveys. If you take a list of questions inside a subject, for example, question 1, version 1.1, question 2, version 1.2, because they are controlled version, you can create a survey. A survey is just a a list of selected questions to use in quite a situation, but when you share your surveys, you have to pay attention that some teachers who may want to deliver the, the survey to their students in different conditions. For example, here are two examples. The first one wanted to let the students access the question one by one on the screen, and he let the question access it on public uh, access on this course. And another one may wanted to deliver the questions uh, after an authentication and only on paper. So on the screen, it's like this. This is a question on screen. You have all the details, the context, the questions, the propositions, uh, and a, a lot of other stuff. For example, uh, degrees of certainty that you can uh, associate it to your answer. And here is a screen when you have the questions on paper, students receive a printed paper with the questions on it and the number which identified the order uh, in which the questions are put to uh, not allow them to copy paste the grid of the next student. And there, there is a version control of the questions. So if someone actually now changed the question seven, which is switches from version 1.1 to version 1.2, the teacher we have created the survey can decide if he synchronizes the question to the latest, latest table version or not. And it's the same for the instance. So each teacher which uses the questions decide himself if he takes the last version of the question or not. For example, here, the survey has been synchronized and the instance once also, but the teacher here prefers to use the last version of the question, but it's his own choice. And when you edit a question, you have a box over here which lists all the surveys and the instance where your question is used. And if I updated this version, which is 1.2, it will become 1.3, and all the area here will become checkbox. And with uh, selecting the different checkbox, I can synchronize all the surveys or surveys instance, for example. And we need to have more than one user authenticated simultaneously on the same browser because sometimes we didn't have some place enough or a computer enough for all students, but also sometimes on the student space, you have only one computer and you have some pals and you want your friends to work with you. But if uh, in a classical learning managing system, only one of them can log into the platform, so only one account will be linked to the answer they record. So we wanted each, teacher, each student to work uh, on the um, same computer. So I'll take an example. Here is a student uh, well known, which is Harry Potter, logged in the Gryffindor house uh, during a, uh, an exercise late at night. And uh, he started because his friends are not there. But uh, I am I and Ron are coming from a Quidditch match. So he said, OK, no problem. I will invite you in my session. Here, you can put your login and password. And when, you are, when three of them are logged in, all the form is multiplied, all the fields are multiplied by the numbers of logged users in this uh, window of the browser. So they can choose their own answer. They are not uh, forced to uh, have a common decision of the answer to record to the one and only which is logged in. The feedback are quite classical to the students. There are the detail here of the points uh, win or lose. At each question, when your, qu your answer is incorrect, you have a red box and a justification, also a green box if it's correct. And you can uh, choose to see the justification. First of all, the justification was always displayed, but the, the students ask us to uh, hide it because it says we have wanted to retry by ourselves without having information of why we have the wrong answer. We, are, we want to learn, so please hide this box of justifications and let it uh, be displayed only on demand. And they can uh, consult their uh, results and compare their answer to the distribution of answer of other students of the same groups or same sections. And it can be uh, set it by the teacher. For example, here, the one, the student here are answered uh, the, the 
I've selected the answer three, but the correct it was a five, and you can see that is part of the 10% of the students we have the wrong answer, which is quite uh, bad. Sometimes you have the wrong answer, but you can uh, see that uh, the major part of the students are also wrong, which is less, Im uh, less important. And uh, there is a tool for collaboration between uh, students. They can write their own correction for the, for the exercise and decide if this correction is in read-only for them. Uh, shared in read-only for the other students or shared in read and write um, permissions. And for the feedback for the teacher, it's quite more complex, so uh, I will not detail all, all the stuff here, but for a teacher who is quite aware about edumetrics, he will find a lot of information to judge the quality of his questions, the quality of his survey, the fact that the, um, did the students are, uh, had learned something regarding to the results of the questions, etc. And there is a lot of export of files for the air uh, scripts to analyze this further and building some reports for authorities, for example. Regarding to the code, the code is in procedural PHP, procedural because we wanted to the, uh, the colleagues to put the end into the code and we judged that the oriented object was quite sometimes more complex for non uh, professional uh, developers. The template is uh, engined by Smarty. Ajax is based on prototypes and Scriptaculous. And the database are in MySQL, in MyAsam engine for the same reason, because we work a lot with um, emerging countries and we wanted small institutions to be able to host the, the application on quite basic server, on the basic of, uh, offers of the host of the country. So when we started this project, you know, DB was not uh, offered ev everywhere. Uh, regarding the license, it's a European Union public license, which uh, um, a public license which has been made by the European Union to allow the institutions of the European Union to publish open source code, uh, and it's uh, translated in all the uh, language of the countries of European Union and quite well adapted to the European Union uh, laws. Uh, actually, the project is hosted on SourceForge in this uh, version quite stable. It's actually used by two universities in Belgium, which represents, uh, depending on the year, uh, between 1,000 to 3,000 users per year. So it's quite uh, stable. But I let it in pre-alpha because I st still uh, thinking that it's missing important functionalities like an installer, like uh, a more precise permission control for the teacher regarding to the to the contents, and uh, more question types. Actually, there is only uh, multiple choice questions with unique answers. We wanted to add some multiple choice questions with multiple answers, open questions, uh, uh, fill in the holes and all like this. Uh, actually, the interface is only in, uh, in French, but uh, uh, English file is in progress, normally for the next uh, release, which uh, will occur in one or two weeks. So like any other projects which uh, are presenting in Lining Tools, help is wanted. Uh, first of all, for share ideas and experience, because actually it's uh, only me, myself, and I which are in this project, and uh, sometimes I want to share experiences made by other users on other platforms, the same platform, on using MCQ or not into teaching or in programming. Uh, help is also needed in uh, coding for cleaning and new functionalities as usual, taming, translation, documentation, everything is, uh, well, will be welcome. So you can, you can contact me uh, at uh, gregor.ving at gmail.com or gregorving.be and I will uh, hand my presentation by some acknowledgement for my director of research and my old, my, all my colleagues which helped me during this research and mainly the NAML Linux user groups uh, which is also involved here in FOSM and the FOSM for the presentation sites. If you have some question, some questions, I'm free for that. Any questions? Yeah. Size of code base. How much are you using code like code? Size of the code base. Uh, good questions uh, around. Um, <laughs> 40,000 lines. Uh, I, I tried to calculate it without the libraries imported for, for other projects, but it's, it's between 40 and 50,000 lines of PHP code. 
but maybe it can be reduced if it's more cleaner in the syntax, but uh, <laughs> other questions? Oh, the question is open for Claroline because uh, Claroline is uh, at a period of his life will it will quite shift between technologies, between uh, uh, home-made PHP scripts to um, Symfony, for example, for, for, for the next version, but it's in, it's in project. It's one of the main goals we had for the future. It's to build a module for uh, imported uh, the, the, the tools in Moodle or Cloud9, not only Cloud9, but Moodle or other learning managing system. But we tried, as it was for research, at the first step, we want to be master of the code and the behaviors. So it has been made the choice to build an um, uh, application which is working alone. But help for building modules will be very, very welcome. Enjoy. I'm sure you've been looking.